Okay, hey everyone, welcome to another PFSense tutorial. My name is Rumbo and we're going to have fun today. So PFSense is a very powerful firewall used by many colleges and industries worldwide and it's free. It's pretty easy to install and it's fun work to work with. Now the one I'm using right now is PFSense 2.3.4 and it is the most stable stable version out there it is very stable and I'm currently using it at my college the college that I work so what I'm giving you right now is just a preview of the software itself currently I'm using it to run a wireless LAN uh, which sometimes speaks at about 900 users and it doesn't break because I have a 40 megabit connection from my ISP in Jamaica well PFSense I've been using PFSense since 2014 and I must say it has been the best thing I've ever seen when it comes down to building captive portals um, to build um, wireless server servers overall and you know to manage users and it has a very powerful firewall so as you look on your screen, you're looking at my dashboard and it is telling you the layout of the different hardware specs I have and it, it's pretty neat, right? So basically today I'm just going to run you through the, the setup I have so you can build your firewall and your firewall will be as strong as mine. So please remember to like and share or just share this video so all the the whole world can see it and know that pfsense is here to stay and is doing a wonderful job so currently we are in the advanced settings and the advanced setting just speaks about the login page whether you want to use http or https https which is more secure the only problem is that when you try and use https and login using the ip or dns you will see an error you just have to bypass that error and you go through you're looking at my dns servers those are open dns dns settings dns ips and they're very good so in in case you want to get those ips you can just type open dns in google open dns ips and then from there now you can go to any link that speaks about dns and you will see the ips in there so as I can see, those are the IPs. 208-67-222-222 or 208-67-220-220. I have an open DNS account. So what open DNS does now is filter down all the porn and non-productive traffic that is experienced on my network, right? So that is very important. I think all system administrators or you know network administrators need to have that. So what we're we are at now is a setup wizard. What this setup wizard does, it makes things easier for you. So like myself, I'm an advanced user, so I would go through all the settings one by one. If you're not an advanced user like myself, you can use a setup wizard and go through step by step so it's like configuring one of your little next or linksys routers so those are default settings you can see my dns i added that override dns was ticked um, by default the time and time zone eastern standard time that's the time zone we use in jamaica so that's the time zone that i am using and that URL that you see here, that org, is there by default. My one configuration it is very important. As you can see, just simple. You just add the IPs for your, your ISP, right? And then that's it. The, you, so you need to add the, the, the static IP from your ISP. You also need to add your gateway and so on and definitely the subnet mask 
currently you're looking at my local IP right and I'm using um, backslash 16 forward slash 16 um, that is 255.255.255 sorry that is 255.255.0.0 right so that is 16 8 octets 8 times 2 8 16 right 8 octets each and so we are at the LAN configuration as you can see IP version 4 you can see my internal IP I'm using forward slash 16 which is the same thing as a class B subnet mask um, when I go over to firewall now this is very important if you can build your firewalls like mine then you can have a very 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 impressive system meaning that persons will not be able to come and just hog down your bandwidth <laughs> right we don't not like that on the network so we're just going to make it run smoothly right no tom cruise no mission impossible on our network so we're just going to design now the limiter and what the limiter does is it gives each device on the network its own bandwidth meaning if a phone is connected on my wireless network it will get the bandwidth that i am going to add here so i have four limiters designed so let's go and look at the up all up all is 10 megabits that means any device and network if they are going to send a file they can get a maximum of 10 megabits per second right you will check my down all as well i'm using five megabits per second right and once you do that if you have 10 devices on a network the maximum each device out of the 10 can get is 5 when it comes down to download speed so they may peak at 4.9 they can't get over that as you can see here now this is how i structured my firewall right you can see some default rules there but you can see some rules that i also added those rules are very important so if you can design your rules like mine then it means that everybody can be forced right back to the open dns server and so on all right so i'm telling you this is an impressive video because this is a one-of-a-kind video it is very difficult to find this type of um demonstration on youtube uh so this is my captive portal and as you can see here within my captive portal setting i have my configuration on the LAN and you can see the time I had there for my uh, idle time and lockout time and so on very 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 interesting stuff uh, my file manager you can see there because I designed my captive portal I created some HTML files to allow users to authenticate so what we're looking at here now is creating vouchers and this is like adding credit to your phone you have a voucher number you scratch it off add it and you get about 30 megabits or maybe a one day connection so you can do this we have a ticket here for 12 minutes let me change it here to 60 minutes that means one hour so each number that is generated here you will get one hour to use so it's very simple when they come to the login screen when the user come to the login screen they will just log in and in order to log in they will just use uh, the code given generated so those are the files that i'm using as you can see there i have my little little logo i have a css file i have a captive portal wi-fi logo it's pretty interesting so if you design your server like mine you know you're on the right path this is my dhcp cp server as well who doesn't know anything about DHCP, just a reminder, DHCP issues IP to any device that needs IP. And then from there, that device will get a IP address. And, and with that IP address, now the person, who, the device can be able, will be able to browse the internet on the network, right? So instead of me going there manually to each device and adding an IP, this server does that for me right and as you can see my dns forwarder settings these are all default settings as well so you don't have to play around with it i was just showing you i can even check my status in regards to the captive portal and dhcp leases and i have several other options there 
so let me see captive portal the captive portal how many devices are on my captive portal very interesting all right so let's check the captive portal and uh, hmm, 91 devices are on my captive board as you can see you see mac addresses ips and because my system doesn't use authentication yes you can even delete all users kick them off the network and allow them to start over so just in case you added some new settings you can make all users take them off the network and then they will add, they will manually add themselves back and that is my dhcp server right now as you can see those are the number of devices that are there iphones wow number of iphones connected all right and let me scroll down and you'll be able to see the number Ooh, 204 devices all right 204 devices are connected all right and let me see something else here now we can even check the the we can even halt the system meaning that you can shut it down right we can even reboot make a restart just in case you need to refresh certain settings you can restart the system and this is what i always do after completing the settings and so on i do a backup and this is very simple just go to backup click download configuration as xml and that's it and save that file normally i email myself that file just in case my removable device is damaged and that's pf sense you know it is a very 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 handy tool and throughout uh, my use with the software you know i have had a really great experience with it so you can go ahead and download it from the pfsense website i will add that information in the description below i will also add maybe one or two instructions in regards to the software in, in installation but installation is pretty easy you download the software you create a bootable disk you install the program on your computer and then Go through the steps you know one step by step just follow the instructions simple thing once you can read you're good and then you log into the interface the web interface that i'm in right now and your web interface will look like mine just that you will see different um version settings and so on right and once you have done that and then configure your server just like mine what you can do you can even play the video pause it play pause check out my settings and run your server just as effectively as I do, right? So thank you so much for tuning in. And this is a PFSense 2.3.4 video. I'm out.